what's going on people out there on the internet uh wednesday heavy metallurgy uh wednesday edition and um we got the, the the club coming up here in a second i just wanted to jump on and um thank everybody for hanging out with us every week and i did want to do a bit of house cleaning before we got started people have been asking how to support the channel we've got um super chats online and we've got um t-shirts available links in the description for that just so you know towards making your viewing experience better we just bought alan a new mic thanks to all of your generosity and uh for the shirts and the super chats and that should be hopefully by next friday he'll be up and running with that so thank you again very much and um just wait we got other plans wait till you see the uh, heavy metal urgy action figures of alan and marty it's going to be cool we're going to have the you know the posable action battle grip going to be sweet you guys are going to love it but until then i want to bring out the dudes from the glorious dead we've got mr chris boris we've got <laughs> tj up, Ted. Up, yeah. we're, we're uh we're down a guy tonight due to technical issues so to curtis our brother if you're watching we miss you and um sorry you couldn't jump on with us tonight but um tonight we have gathered last week this is the fourth edition of the glorious album club thank yeah. you guys for going on this journey it's been a ton of fun and um i do want to say so one thing we'll encourage at the end too we'll try to say at the end of every episode what the next album is going to be so hey if you want to participate more and know what we're talking about you'll know what the album's going to be check it out and uh chat with it uh chat with us about it as we are live um always curious to hear what your thoughts are on these albums some of this stuff you know this one i think we've all kind of heard and um but there's other times where the guys or myself not me completely unfamiliar with it but um anyway how are you guys doing tonight i am so good it's nice to be here i'm Heck fine day at work i'm ready to unwind on some groovy ass doomy ass metal i'm uh, i'm just looking forward to friday that's <laughs> Get this week over with. <laughs> yes. To quote Lover Boy, everybody's working for the weekend. Hey, there uh, he is. Hey, there hey. Is. There Wee. Is. Woo. All hail the captain. How You're was everybody's day today? We had a lot of people work today. You're talking through a fan again, TJ. Know. I don't know what changes. Well, I just, that's, I'm, hey, it, you're welcome. <laughs> I don't know either. He lives out in the sticks. He, we got Country we got internet. ghetto we got ghetto connection out there. I got squirrels running my internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, last week or the last two weeks ago, Chris chose um, this album, Paramecium Exhumed of the Earth, which we have been spinning for two weeks now. And um, I guess before we get started, we should dive into a little brief history of the band they uh paramecium are from melbourne australia uh they formed in 1991 with and put out the demo silent carnage the lineup then if people know who these people are i don't know there was andrew Tompkins, steve palmer and a guy named mosh which is you know i'm sure that was so cool name. yeah so cool <laughs> guys i told you to call me mosh <laughs> but um <coughs> after that you all know that i mosh everyone knows that i mosh <laughs> 1993, they put out their debut album, the one we're talking about tonight, Exhumed of the Earth. Basically, it looks like a different lineup. It's Andrew Tompkins again with Jason Sherlock and Jason DeRon. Um, Jason Sherlock is a little more widely known, I think, in Christian circles and in the wider music scene in general. He was also the drummer on the first three Mortification albums. We got the debut, self-titled. And Scrolls of the Megaloth. I do not have post monetary affliction. He went on to be the mystery, the mystery man behind the ever controversial Horde album. Um, sounded very Norwegian black metal esque. It came out in 1994, and uh, there was a lot of angry, angry black metalers about this album. But I tell you what, this I think one of the most pound. surreal moments in uh, in music in black metal history was the release of that. That is just a weird thing that happened there 
Yeah, and it, yeah. it kind of it set the whole um, subgenre of well, well, Helle Gusvard is Norwegian for holy unblack. So there's like a an unholy unblack metal scene now, thanks to yeah. this album here. You kind of well, actually, that I have to I have to inject into the you know the whole holy unblack tag was always kind of a. Um, uh, I, think I, can, I think I can do it. Oop, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Is that right? There we go. Anybody? I turned it down. Okay. okay. So the whole the whole unblack thing, there was there's always been kind of two two sides to that argument. There was always the guys that you know agreed for it for obvious reasons in inside Christian circles, but then there's the guys in there that are like, why you know why call it that when it's just it is what it is. It's black metal. Black doesn't have to necessarily denote anything other than a style, like saying like death a, metal or what anything else. And like so a meatless it, burger, you know, why yeah, you have to call it a yeah. meatless burger? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and so it's it's oh it's always kind of been you know I don't know if contentious is the right word, but there's always been debates about it because I remember when it came out and and he managed to keep it secret for a long, long time. Although most people always kind of understood that it was him. Um, you know, cause Jason Sherlock has always been kind of one of the standout guys in the scene. So, uh, for the Christian metal stuff, cause you know, you had the, the few high, high, you know, the, the few high ranking bands that really kind of always stood above, um, that always get all the attention and then everything else underneath it. And he's always kind of been part of that. Yeah. And there's no denying the guy's talent. I mean, he not only create on that horde album not only is it that buzz saw guitar sound um he completely aped that old cold um black metal feel but it's he does got it, ripped uh, it's so got well. ripped yeah. it's yeah he's got good songwriting and riffs and he's a great drummer and they even um years later they went to oslo and did a live show yeah which is even funny because that it was the the it's Norwegian weird. scene that was like we're so mad at Horde we're gonna kill him you know and it's like the most epic <laughs> troll Manny it is the most epic troll yeah. I've ever ever seen um I guess too I don't know if you guys knew about this or not I was doing a little reading just on because yeah like Jason is uh, yeah he's just uh, he's so kind of known in that um, in that genre that. We're probably going to talk about him quite a bit tonight, um, him and him specifically. But um, so, yeah, with Horde, he was publishing the music under Anonymous. And I don't know if you guys do this or not, but I guess at the time, so uh, there was the belief out there that this actually was Euronymous uh, posting stuff or make, you know, releasing music. And uh, I don't know if maybe they thought like he actually wasn't dead. Like, he, and, um, they were like uh, the label was receiving like death threats at the time, and uh, it was like it was a huge thing. Apparently, um, I ain't never heard that one. It. That's yeah. that's kind of funny. Yeah, funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's kind of kind of interesting. Well, the band went on to put out four albums um, throughout the course of the year, and I, I guess we should mention too that a few of the bands we already mentioned mortification and horde but the pre mortification band light force jason was also in also in the band altera enigma and currently recently he is in the band the death metal band uh, revulsed and uh, they put out a good chunk of albums there's like six or seven albums from those guys, and but... and, he, and he's primarily it's basically that's just him I mean, really? primarily, it? yeah, it's, yeah, it's just, it's kind of him and the vocalist and, uh, he gets other guys involved. Technical. It's, it's super sick. I mean, it's like, mm, it's like it's totally good. suffocation type stuff. And it's so, it is so very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most everything, uh, Mr. Sim uh, Sherlock has touched is, is really, really good, you know, for sure. It's agreed. It's, um, like I said, yeah. the guy's a talent and he, he obviously, is a student of metal, you know, and yeah, great, great, awesome, very talented guy. But, um, I guess the good place to start would be, you know, really a, a topic we haven't touched upon really on heavy metallurgy much is, um, Christian metal. It's a, a sub, a sub genre within the metal genre. Um, 
And I'll, I guess I'll just start, you know, how did I discover Christian metal? I guess it wasn't on my radar at all. I grew up in a non-religious household and um, just never really, religion just isn't a thing for me, never has been. And I guess on my metal quest, there was a record sta- uh, uh, college station here in town and a WNMC that had a, a metal show. And um, Keith was the guy that ran it, and it was a killer. I heard Merciful Fate, all sorts of killer stuff. And all of a sudden, one day, a Lee Metcalf took over the station, and um, she changed. The, she kept it a metal programming, but she changed it all to at least 95 to 97 percent Christian metal. So that was my, I guess, first descent into hearing, being exposed to Christian metal. And um, you know, I remember being bothered by it the fact that you call him put in request for nuclear assault and she just pretended like she didn't have the records anymore but um and um i don't know i just and it got me thinking over the years how dumb it was for me to be getting pissed off about christian metal because i have no dog in that fight for one thing and you know i i'm sure there are some bands out there in the world that are true satanists and they believe in what they believe but I think a lot of it is image. You know, they're, they're singing about crap. You know, to them, it's fantastical. It fits the genre that they're playing in, and it's dark, and it's expressing their inner thoughts and soul. But um, I, I often wondered why, when I was younger, that the Christian metal bother me. It's because I guess I thought that the people that were singing about it actually believed it, and, they, and it wasn't a stick to them. It was their thing, you know? But like I said, as years go on, you start to realize, well, if you're going to get pissed at one and not pissed at the other, that's kind of dumb. I think um, Tim here chimed in and oops, Tim chimed in here and said, white metal, black metal, as long as it's good, it's worth a listen. Absolutely, man. Oh, yeah. And um, I don't know. What about what about you, TJ? Where did you start off in this in this quest? <clears throat> well, I I like you. Um, I discovered uh, the metal main line WNMC with, uh, with uh, Lee Metcalf and uh I was introduced to them. Well, what did I do? I'm trying to think. I, I, w- I would listen, trying to hear something cool, because it was the only thing metal you could get on the radio, you know. And, and back then, you know, you took what you could get, whatever. And um, I, I think, what did I do? I called in, and I won. What did I win? I won. I can't remember what CD. I won, I won a tape. or something. I can't remember if it was. might have been Vengeance. Man, it might have been vengeance, or did I order that? I can't even remember now. But and just and to so help, they, what what a year would this have been? Generally, what oh year my, would oh this my have God. been? Um, eighty nine. Eighty nine. Wow, it was okay. before that, maybe. I think yeah, it, it started earlier than that. Well, I'm just trying to think of when I met them. It would have been um, at least well, eighty eighty nine, eighty eight, like. Before I got out of high school, I was driving, so, you know, something like that, um, and I'm trying to think, uh, when did the Vengeance Rising, um, I think we can almost take a little more gain off, uh, I, yeah, it's not gain, it's something on his end, I don't know, it comes and goes. All right. Yeah, sorry, probably just, uh, now it's good. Okay, I'm trying to see here. Uh, so, Human Sacrifice came out in '88, and I had a copy of that before they changed the name. Um, I had the original Vengeance, and then they re-released it with the new one or whatever it was. And uh, so, I met them sometime around there. Because I remember, I actually, I think I got that first before I actually met them, and then I think I won a Believer um, CD from them. Nice. And so I, I, you know, they invited me over to their apartment to pick it up. I've still got, as a matter of fact, I still got the envelope uh, <laughs> or whatever. Do you really? Yeah. Um, that whole that whole story with them, we could we could do a we could do a stream just about them. Not that it would matter to anybody, but but us no. local people. <laughs> no but, one. Yeah. No, yeah, but um. They, uh, yeah, that was where, you know, Vengeance Rising was my first introduction. And I was, you know, at the time, it's like, I couldn't believe 
that that band was making that great of music and they they you know though they'll, those first two albums still kind of remain kind of mandatory they're really they're just great um it's just great stuff um and you know the um at first the message wasn't as important to me and then as i progressed it became more essential to me as a person um and it was just always so so spot on and and so well thought out um you know, they, they, uh, of the Christian bands of the time, you know, there were, there were some that evangelized and some that preached and some that just played and put the stuff in and, you know, and they, they were definitely e evangelical. You know, they were definitely trying to proclaim um, the gospel. Is this, Vengeance Rising. Vengeance Rising. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, but that's where that all started for me, um, you know, in the metal main line and, and the truth is, is when Lee told you she didn't have those records, she didn't have them. They were she gone. Did. She, she, she didn't have any of that stuff. I was in that studio all the time. If if it, if they were there, she didn't go near them, and she, she didn't, didn't know. She didn't know where they were there then because yeah. I when Jay was working there, I went in one night and I found a stack of metal records this big, nuclear yeah. assault. I mean, all the and I, and I went, I bought I went, them all from the program director for yeah. a buck a beat. Because yeah. uh, one night when I was in there rooting around and stuff, I did find a box of records and there was, it was a small box of stuff. There was like um, Cross the Sticks and a couple other things and they were all drawn, you know, WNMC all over them and yep. and no, she did, they brought, they brought their music with them. Yeah. Every night they had two giant duffel bags of music that they would carry around, and that's what they did the show with. Yep. So, how about you, Chris? Um, I guess I don't know. Probably a good ten years ago or so. I, uh, I guess the only Christian like extreme music that I had ever heard was Mortification. I had just stumbled across uh, post momentary <clears throat> affliction. affliction. Yeah. Um, I had just stumbled across that record in a used bin at my local FYE uh, many years ago, and I just bought it um, unheard just because it looked like death metal and it, it looked good. It was only later that I um, – and I loved it. Even um, – you know, I think that album – is maybe considered a little bit of a departure in style, but I, I when they really, started to change. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really liked that album though. And, um, uh, yeah, the cover art was awesome and it was still really good death metal to me. And it was only later that I realized that they were like a full on Christian band. And that was just, I was like, Oh wow. You know, interesting. Um, but I, and I, so I would listen to that album quite a bit. And then, and then, um, I don't know. I think just then that was really it. And through talking to you guys more so these past few years um, is how I kind of got turned on to stuff like Paramecium and um, just kind of bought that album based on your guys' recommendation a while ago. And I finally have, you know, dove into it a little bit and it's fucking awesome. And yeah, again, white metal, black metal. All I know is it uh, better be heavy, and and uh, it doesn't even. Yeah, I don't care. What's more, what's more metal than the battle between good and evil? You know, right on, 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 on both. I don't care if it's the good or evil side. It's pretty fucking epic and awesome. So uh, there you go. I don't. I guess, I, go ahead. I mean to cut you off. I, I guess I'm. I I'm happy to see that. I, I and again, I, I I grew up in a um, Christian household, but I mean late teens early 20s i you know i haven't really i'm more like if i had to say i was anything i'd probably uh describe myself more like an as a agnostic kind of person um but um so but there's always that little part of me that's like wow like so you, you know all the stories of course and um it, it was it's it's neat to see that like they're actually good I, it, it, like the the christian bands are like actually good that was I didn't that, really think that would that be the case. That has been kind of a that's. I'm not gonna lie. Early on, there were a handful of really good. I mean, I think Tim mentioned his first was Trouble and Stripe. Not that Trouble was straight up a Christian band. I know Metal Blade tried to push them as white metal, which I guess the band was bothered by. But you know, they had more spiritual type. Like, kind of like Sabbath. I mean, Sabbath wouldn't sure. necessarily be a Christian band, but you know, Geezer's lyrics were very much 
Uh, well, we always find the at, light in the darkness. But. Well, I mean, after forever, after forever is probably one of the most Christian songs. Yeah. You know, you could ever, and I've seen other bands, you know, try to, you know, try to dumb it down somehow. Um, you know, but it, the truth of the matter is, is when you read that those lyrics, just as they're written, and try not to read anything into them. You know, he's asking a very poignant question. You know, he's he's a very pointed and direct question. It's like, you know, where do you stand? Who do you think you are? And 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 what do you think is going to happen? And you know, it's it's a it's a. Um, I think you know the lyrics are very powerful. You know, if if you let them get into your head, you know. Yeah. But um, I remember, you know, there was like Believer who were really killer. I always liked that band early on. Their first three albums are great. And um, there are a handful of other ones, you know. It, it's just like any genre. There's good and bad. But we had uh, two um, Christian bookstores in town, Rainbow Bookstore. It was down on South Airport here. You'd go in there, and they'd have the, the CD section. We had a little bit of metal stuff, REX Records and whatever other label. Yeah, in fact, this is on REX. Um and if you like Metallica, you will love Tourniquet or, you know, it's yeah. like, and then you get the bands and you listen to it and you're like, man, I wish I didn't put that sticker on there because yeah, this band is trying to sound like this secular band, but they're not as good. Yeah, they're always, yeah. One thing that always detracted it's like Rose from was, Kranz, man. Right. The, the, the production was never, the production was okay, but it was never like big budget type production, you know, they, right. they're trying, they're, they're trying to work within a sphere of um, popularity to get people to check out their message in their band. But the sound production just didn't shine, make that material shine like it should have. So I think over the years, um, I think that has improved. There's still, I mean, deliverance, I believe and tourniquet are still a thing. I think Striper, I mean, Striper is still productive. They're probably more popular now than they've ever been. I mean, they're they putting actually, out album after they album, just, and they're actually they just pretty put, good. They just put out, Striper just put out a new record, Deliverance is out playing stuff. Ted Kirkpatrick, which is basically Tourniquet, he's kind of another um, wonder kind drummer, um, uh, and he was kind of the driving force behind Tourniquet. Uh, they're, they're still doing stuff, and it's and it's like you say, you know, that's always been the thing. It's like, in you know, I, you look at the Christian threads on Facebook now and stuff, and everybody's still, hey, does anybody know of a band that sounds like this band? And, you know, I got tired of going in there and going, no, no, they don't. None of them do. None, none of these bands sound like any of these other bands. Like maybe this riff or maybe that riff or something, but none of them do. You know, either listen to that band or don't. Don't sit on the fence. You know, if you don't, if you got an issue with it, then just don't listen to them. But if not, then just listen to them, you know, work that out and, and appreciate it for what it is, but stop trying, you know, and that's always, and again, with the Christians, it's like lead from the front or get out of the way. And that's always kind of been a problem is it's these bands always trying to ape somebody else's sound or trying to, or trying to, you know, come up from the rear or try, trying to be like, oh, hey, you know, we're like this. And it's like, no, man get out there and own it, you know, and that's always been a, a big problem. That's why there's always been so few bands that can really, that have ever really risen to the top of what's really good. There's, there's a lot of Christian metal bands. There's tons of them, tons and tons of them, but man, a lot of them just don't really, I, you know, I don't, and I don't care if I get any hate for it from, from the brothers, but it's like, there's a lot of them that just ain't worth the time. They're just, you know, so it's not that good. And, I appreciate them and I love those guys. And, you know, back when I was in Feast Eternal, you know, we played, we played with plenty of them, you know, but, <laughs> but it was just, it just is what it is, you know, but, I mean, you could say the same thing for secular as well. I mean, sure. especially now with, with the internet and yeah, you know, you get on the band camp and you can spend a weekend just diving down the rabbit hole of mediocrity and outright banal. Oh. Oh yeah, just you know. So it's it, but I guess the thing with the Christian, it's like they, there, there's always such a laser pointed at them. Like, of course, you yeah, know, yeah. you know. Uh oh. Uh oh. He's frozen. 
Yeah, everybody, just so you know, TJ is, uh, <laughs> he lives out in the boonies and like about 45 minutes away from major town. So his uh, internet sucks. That's why we're getting some uh, feedback and stuff. He's literally broadcasting from like a uh, ET phone home uh, speak and spell contraption right now, pointing between a couple trees right. <laughs> to get here to us. I'm going to text him. I'm sure he knows. Anyway, continue. Sure. Go ahead, Chris. Sorry. Yeah. Well, and I guess for uh, since um, TJ did mention um, uh, his old band, Feast Eternal, <laughs> I don't know if... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Simon, you rule, Indeed. man. That's enough out of you, Tej. Um, <laughs> here he comes. I... Here he comes. He's back. Okay. <laughs> Simon from <laughs> Australia said, "Struck down by the Lord." <laughs> Silence, you, got, you. you have sound. You all right? You with us? You with us? Can't hear you. Anybody know sign language? Sorry, everybody. It's all right. Anyway, you were saying, Chris, I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess for anybody who didn't know, um, our front man, TJ, uh, he's been in a I lot of bands better. over the... Oh, yeah, we're Hello? Hello? Yep. Okay. You're there. All right. Welcome okay. back. You were saying, TJ, We've before you were blacked out? I'm not out? sure what I was saying. I'm not sure what I was saying. I forget now. The brain is squishy. Hey, you said the word feast eternal, so I figured it'd be a good time to talk about that. Oh. Oh, I guess what I was saying was, uh, see, I was, it's like when I was in Feast Eternal, we used to play with a lot of bands that were just kind of really subpar. Not that we were anything great. I mean, we had our fans and whatever, but, you know, um, it was just kind of, it's always been a real problem that the good bands don't ever, uh, thanks, um, thanks a lot. <laughs> we just don't get a lot of, uh, push, you know, um. No, no, there's no mainstream, if you will, mainstream, you know, with the metal, you know, um, you know, push on that. And, you know, Brian Slagle and Metal Blade dabbled and a few of the others have dabbled. I mean, we even talked when Feast was still going, you know, Metal Blade came sniffing around us a little bit, but I don't think they felt we were ready um, at the time, you know, but. Um, and, and for anybody who doesn't know, TJ was. Uh... Uh, oh my God! It's, Feast Eternal, go. and <laughs> and they made um, and they made some waves. Um, I don't know. You guys were really, really active. Uh, I'd say late '90s, early 2000s. Is that mostly when you were putting out albums? Yeah, I think um, I don't know. Prisons came out in like '99 or something, and um, and then we were like, what every every four years <laughs> after that? Yeah, we we had a, we had like three tape demos two tape demos that we did um before the album i've got a i've got one copy of it i've got a copy of it too Do you and it's abs absolutely killer death metal every, every album it's awesome <sighs> anyway. i've had people trying to get me to give them a copy of this and uh, I always tell people I said this is wow this will, th this will never this will never hear no one shall hear this again yes <laughs> it's recorded in glorious mono like that sounds <laughs> if anybody wants a copy hit me up it's seven hundred and seventy seven dollars <laughs> all right <laughs> there it is there it is <laughs> uh, uh, seven dollars and seventy seven cents <laughs> yeah there that's even better yeah that's even better but yeah but no nah, man <laughs> i don't know so um chris may not be able to get too into this conversation but um how were yeah. christian bands perceived by the metal crowd at large or not are now i mean i i would say that there's definitely been a, a paradigm shift when well you, you look in what way well, right. well, I mean, before they were often scrutinized and, you know, the, the secular scene would thumb their nose at the, the Christian scene. But now you look at bands like Antester who have had Hellhammer from Mayhem play drums on their album. I mean, there's been sure. like 
and there's like all these bigger bands are getting more recognition. Um, I can't name any off the top yeah. of my head because well, you but know, you look it's at like, like not as a big of a like, thing. Um, like Demon Hunter and yeah. Flyleaf was another one. You know, that's kind okay. of like quasi metal. You know, um, they, you know, they get they're big they're huge you know um and there there is somewhat of a paradigm shift you know i mean because you go all the way back into 80 whatever it was and striper came out but they had this huge push behind them the, the machine was in full force to make them become superstars and they were out doing uh you know stadiums and whatever but then nobody else could kind of exist in the wake of that you know you had other bands you know, Petra and stuff, you know, um, uh, uh, DC talk was another one. They, they were big in, in, I saw them the, live. Their, yeah. Did you? Oh, hell um, yeah. <laughs> they, they were, they were th- Alice. <laughs> three bucks, three whole dollars, boy. You got a rod brother. You were fucked. <laughs> but, but, um, what an idiot. <laughs> but you know, but but those bands were always big in their own, in their own circles, you know, and then in the Christian scene, Outside of that, it's like they have their, you know, non-Christian fans and stuff. And obviously you, you would expect that that's, you know, helping support, you know, their popularity. But by and large, you know, you couldn't really just couldn't get into that space. But then you move more into now. And there is a little, I think there's more bands that are, you know, more except, you know, what's another skillet's another one that's been really out there lately. Um, but again, you know, I don't know. You know, they're just there's so few of them that get any attention. And as far as the extreme bands go, it's still the same thing. You know, nobody's there's a few um, a few companies that are still trying to put music. You know, like Vision of God and Rottweiler. Um, those guys are still trying to do stuff. Vision of God uh, re, has repressed uh, Paramecium on vinyl and a um, bunch of other yeah. bands and stuff. That like is that. a sick, re- sick uh, vinyl version there. That uh, I know, beautiful green yeah. splatter. It's it's yeah. nice. They're not giving 50. that away though. I was no, gonna buy it. Bucks. Like the price, I'm yeah. like, oh, yikes. Yeah, that's why I didn't buy because it's like fifty bucks. It's like I'm still, you know, I'll pay thirty now if I gotta have it. You know, but. Once you break that, it's like, whoa, <laughs> it's brutal, you know? Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's just, it, it, there are definitely, um, there are definitely some, uh, there's some bands now that definitely g- get a lot more traction. I mean, Demon Hunter's probably, as far as metal, you know, and those guys are more in the vein of, like, uh, Kill Switch and stuff like that. You know, they're kind of more in that ballpark. Uh, so not you know, good. Eh, <laughs> not my cup of tea. Uh, a lot of people like them. I and I've never been a fan. You know, yeah. um, it's just no, not thanks. my thing. Um, well, I, I do. I will say I, I've seen. Well, Mortification came to Traverse City here. I saw them killed by Kane, who I thought sucked. And then, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you talk about the division in the scene. It was funny. I went to that show. It was poorly. Yes. It was poorly attended. Of course. But um, there was where was you know, this, Marty? Where was the show? Lars Hawks Lars Auditorium. Hawks. Yeah, it's, it's an in auditorium. the old, in old, old cent- in the old Central High School or uh, the high school downtown. Wow! So this was in a downtown high school auditorium. Mortification yep. yeah. came to a small town, our town. Yep. Traverse yeah. City, Michigan. What year? Oh man, um, they were touring. Um, it was after Jason left the band. So it was like oh Jason was uh, not there okay yeah no it was this other kid that played oh it's um extol he was in extol for a while oh, some other band I know them yeah, yeah another cool. good band yeah and, and there's another band I, that got traction you know these yeah. two gentlemen were at you both were at the show yeah yeah nice. and it was funny you talk about the division in the scene there was, was the obviously the, the <laughs> yeah the there was obviously the young kids in the church groups that were there to see him. And then there was the guy with the deicide, uh, a definition shirt. The destruction was that man you that by holy. chance? He's walking around <laughs> like he smelt something bad. He had the deicide shirt on. And I thought that was you who wore the deicide shirt there. No, I, I, had got, just, I, I had just remember, I had just remember shirt on for okay. that. I remember what I, shirt I wore. 
I got such a <laughs> kick hearing about the guy in the DSI shirt. The yeah, we were actually uh, show. John, John and I were actually uh, John and I were actually on stage for the mortification show. It's supposed to be like Do- keep doing keep what people from keeping people from climbing four yes. feet up, <laughs> which was a joke, but. Wow! It was it was it was good. They did it was a good show. It was, it was sure. It was, it was during Terry Festival, and Foreigner was playing, and I think Slayer played that weekend downstate. And so wow. it was like, the, and 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 Jim and Lee from the Metal Mainline are the ones that put it on, and you know they couldn't get any local support, and they hardly advertised. They got I think it was like two hundred people showed up, two hundred something like that. Really, it was hard to tell in that big of a theater. Yeah. I think so it, it was a uh, yeah. it was a big on a uh, big empty room. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that just seems so crazy to me that that happened. You know, that's that's really cool. Well, well, and then what what trying, a it seems surreal, like with the they church groups really there, but also the hardcore to, metal um, guys. Well, no, that's just that they the church none of the churches would get behind them on anything. And uh, they tried real hard, you know, to get the churches involved. And keep in mind, back in, you know, uh, 90 whatever, 91 or whatever it was, you know, nobody, uh, you know, the, the churches just weren't open to anything that was there kind was of. division uh, even within that whole scene itself. Yeah. Oh yeah. sure, the elders, I mean, the always, elders were gatekeepers. They didn't want to let as these there young always kids. has been. Yeah, yeah for sure. And for the longest time, it was always, you know, the, the, the debate was always, you know, you know, rock music and blah, 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 you know, and, and that's, you know, slowly but surely kind of, uh, dwelt, you know, gone away, you know, because and that was were, hardcore satanic panic era too. I mean, it was, I, I remember like th- things were intense, uh, yeah. spiritually well, back you know, you then get, with you, music you get, and it, you get into the early '90s and the kind of the satanic panic was kind of dying down, but the yeah, church was, was it still, was the '80s thing, more '80s. Yeah, the, okay. the, the church, yeah, the church was still very much kind of anti rock and roll music. Period. You know, there was always, you know, and then as the internet started coming up, you'd get you'd see a lot of these um, essays and stuff. You know, um, like Christians talking about why it's wrong and this and that. And it was always. You know their their theology and stuff on it was always so kind of shaky and and just backwards. It's you know sound the sounds that you make, uh, you know it just are not uh, the tritone, the it, unholy tritone. Yeah, yeah, the the flatted fifth, the note of Satan. It's like give me a break, man. It's like God, I'm sorry, God invented the scale. God made them all. You don't sit here. You know it's like it doesn't matter. You know, <laughs> you sit here and kind of. Whatever, you know, you can take it and do something. You know, you'd be like Garm, you know, with his glass of Chardonnay. Satan. <laughs> yeah. Know, well, that was whatever. Gaul, actually. That was Gaul. Yeah, Gaul, whatever, whatever. Yeah, it shows you how much attention I pay to that tool. But, you know, it's just, uh, <laughs> you know. Um, but the point is just, um, you know, you, you, you take it and pervert it and whatever. But it's like uh, there's nothing, nothing wrong with it, you know. So... But that was back in the in those days, it was still a big problem, and there's always debates, and it still comes up from time to time, but not like it used to. Yeah, that seems about right. I remember seeing uh, Living Sacrifice at uh, Milwaukee Metal Fest. I think uh, Solid State had a contingent of bands at that. Who else played? Um, no, I'm sure they did. Another Christian band played. They were quite good. I can't remember. It wasn't Zayo. I can't remember who the fuck it was. But anyway, you know what? I had to give those guys props because they're they're in a a non Christian crowd and they're raging. They're crushing. And um, you know, in between, they'd stop playing. Some be like, "God is fucking dumb," you know, and the guy would be like, oh, that's your opinion, man. And then they just jump into another song. And I thought, you know what? Stepping into the lion's den and oh, yeah. like, doing what that, you believe in. I, I, kinda, I stayed. I watched their whole set. I, you know, salute to those guys for sticking it out. Yeah. You know? And that's another thing, too, is uh, there was uh, so many of these bands that would never get out and try and and, and actually slug it out with the big boys. And, and they were, they'd were they always preach to the choir. And we got sucked into that whole trap too and that was one of the kind of undoings of my old band is i was tired of playing 
like church assemblies and and Christian shows and you know and just not getting any support and and you know I wanted to go out and play real shows with real people. It's like those that's I mean we're this stuff we're singing about these things. That's who needs to hear it, not the people that all think the same thing. You know, it's like, it's like there's a place for all that. But it, it kind of became contentious, and there's a long, you know longer backstory to that that I won't get into. But they, you know, Marty's familiar with. But um, you know, that's the trouble. It's like you like Believer. I know Believer played uh, Europe with Bolt Thrower at one point. I believe it was. And, wow. Um, you know, uh, they did really well out on the road. But I mean, the band, you know, they're so good. It's you know, but again, that's it carries the message along. You know, it's really hard for anybody to care about what you're saying when you're terrible, you know? Yeah. It just makes it worse. <laughs> they already For don't sure. care about what you're saying. And if you suck on top of it, there's no redeeming quality right. at all to, right. to glom onto, you know? Right. Totally. And I think a lot of people that are, you know, like, Oh, is there any band out there like Slayer I can listen to? Cause I don't want to go to hell. I mean, I think those people are so used to listening to half ass bands maybe mm -hmm. because they're trying to stick within, they turn the other cheek as to quality. You know, they, they let some things slide. Maybe this is just a hypothetical. I'm generalizing, yeah. but um, I, I'm just curious why you found yourself in Christian bookstores back then, Marty, because there was metal <laughs> CDs in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. No, you know, the, the they had Christian the, video games in there and the whole thing. It was kind of not video games really then sort of not. I, <laughs> I remember that they had like uh, I, I remember back in the day there was there was Christian Nintendo games in, in a Christian bookstore. There was a couple like, that came out literally, literally like terrible. you know throw crucifixes at the devil and whatever. <laughs> I heard they were I heard they were really bad. little little <laughs> souls and they looked like little uh, over easy eggs. It was weird. Um, and then like the devil was at the top of the screen like doing like walking like an Egyptian. Walking like Egyptian. Yeah. yeah, it was. Um, I forget that if it man. I gotta find out the name of that game. Here we go, a, Wisdom crazy... Tree Games. Oh, dude, yeah. yeah, absolutely. There was a whole line. It's same thing with metal. There was a whole line of if you like video games, but you don't want to go to hell, you know, play these ones. Right. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, Noah, you know, or whatever. It's, not, it, it's you know, it's it's what it comes down to is people trying to purify their walk. You know, they're they're trying to be holy. They're trying to be righteous. And they, when they want to love their music and they find themselves in, in their spirit, when they listen to other bands, you know, they feel, you know, I just don't feel right about listening to somebody sing, you know, blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, you know, because I mean, the Bible itself says that is the unforgivable sin, you know, and, and, and obviously, you know, so David Vincent picked those lyrics for obvious reasons, you know, like, oh, yep. look at me. I, so I, my balls are so big. I, you know, God, <laughs> I always like to remember when I'll paraphrase this, when Billy Milano talked about, you know, these devil worshiping bands, he's like, you know, these fucking guys ever met Satan, they'd shit their pants. And it's, yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. Suppose anybody would, you know? Yeah. Anyway, TJ's <laughs> out of it. So, Chris. That's what you get, TJ. What's your first impression of this album? Exhumed? Yeah, I suppose Earth. we should. Um, yeah, so the album. It, yes, I suppose we should talk about the album. It, uh, this album is awesome. Totally awesome. Um, I am, I suppose it all, it kind of depends on my mood. And I think, I think this goes for a lot of people, whether you're in the mood for a doom album right uh so that i mean that that became a little bit of an issue with this but overall it's absolutely awesome it's got a ton of just heavy heavy fun incredible riffs um it starts out as maybe you guys uh have been listening to um with this huge epic number it's like i don't know 17 minutes or something like that this big um narrative and i think it's talking about Oh, the birth of Christ. And it's like, it's, it's your heavy metal nativity scene. And, uh, it's really, it's got operatic parts. There's a, an opera singer in there. Um, which I actually kind of liked, you know, she, she, um, added like a cool, I don't know. It just made, it made it very epic and very like 
almost kind of sounded like Roman a little bit, which I know like, you know, that was, that was part of the story too. But, um, and I, I kind of actually found myself missing her voice from the other tracks on the album. Cause that's, that's the only one she's featured on, but, um, yeah, it just starts out like a good two minute buildup of like, you know, um, just like one note, it's like jun, 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 jun. when it finally hits into that first riff, it's like it's it's incredible. It's it's a uh, break your neck, and um, it's pretty. It's almost kind of progressive in that sense. It's like long, um, long compositions. It's uh, it's awesome. So I really like that first track. Even little baby Jesus makes an appearance. Uh, the the, the uh, so. <laughs> How many albums literally have baby Jesus on it? Like, like speaking on it, baby Jesus. He was mostly just saying like, uh, wah, you know, wah, wah uh, on it. But uh, that probably shot but, their recording budget. That's probably why. Yeah. It a little tiny. And if he was like born in an echo, <laughs> he was born in a reverb chamber, apparently yeah. like, oh my God, someone get this kid to a, a doctor. But um, what, what's this baby doing in this reverb chamber? But um. No, it was awesome. And then, uh, yeah, the rest of the album is just a, um, a, a doom, death, metal, solid album. It's it's great the whole way through. Um, yeah, and I guess with with as far as like content, it just talks about um, pretty broad strokes Christianity stuff. <laughs> that, that that they are not. That they are not. They are. They're, <laughs> I, I guess they're priceless. Um, <laughs> But uh, oh, I forget what I was saying. It, it's um, yeah, great, great record all all the way through. Really, um, you know, with some of the Doom stuff, it can droll on at times a little bit. But um, and it's a long album too. It's like a mi- over an hour, um, which is always a little risky in my mind. If you hit that hour mark, um, you are definitely risking losing me <laughs> a little bit at times. But um, overall, um absolutely fantastic you know well this album when it came out i probably got a dub of it from either tj or from matt the the drummer from feast eternal and um always loved it um oh i thought it was a really good um christian doom metal band i mean obviously it'd be one of those if you like paradise lost and my dying bride you will like check out paramecium type of situation and that their influences are on their sleeve especially on that first song that chris was talking about uh the unnatural conception in two parts the birth and massacre of the innocents um there's some violin on there which uh gives it a very mournful really uh sobering uh, yeah very sobering but it really uh, uh, pays attention to that mournful harmony that works through the song very cool and the baby crying comes in and um but I and I finally bought an actual copy of it a year or two ago. Finally, I got it surprisingly for 15 bucks. It might have been through Amazon or REX Records edition, unless it's, of course, it's a bootleg Russian boot. Who could be? But um, that's the that's same as mine, the REX. And I listened to it once then. I'm like, yep, I like it still good. And you know, putting it on this week, I'm not gonna lie, I have not been in the mood for Doom, and I really need to be in the mood for doom and when i am i love it and i did love this again but um (laughs) tj is having some serious trouble here folks we're so sorry you there tj there he is there's that handsome guy can you hear us yeah i don't know how well this is gonna work but uh well, it's better than it was the other way. My <laughs> for this phone. But anyway, uh, for, already, for you know, first him. impression of not listening to it for a year or two, I really like this album. Still, I was um, not being as into feeling like I wanted to listen to Doom as much. There? I was. Yep, we're here. Oh, oh my god! My god. <laughs> I can't. I You're... can hear you, Chris. Oh, there's Mark. It's like it's. <laughs> It's like a drunk baby. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> mom. But um, is this for working? Me, the album there was. It seems to be so far. We see you. Yeah, nice All to right. see you. We um, we um, I'm sorry. I totally lost my train of thought. 
um oh i was able to look at it a little more critically and um i think a good share of the songs on this are awesome there's a couple i didn't care for uh, i found i thought like this track um i think it was the killing it was all very much um doomed by numbers you're trying to play slow and um the song it was just kind of low rent doom metal it just it, the song didn't go nowhere it was just kind of a boring song i think though the band succeeds more when um they break it up there's a little bit of speed some a heavier faster plod comes yeah. in there's even some uh time changes and shit in the song removed of the grave the last song and i you know i cracked the, the seal on this and looked at the lyrics it looks like i'm assuming this is like the journey of christ's life the beginning is the nativity and then you've got um the killing untombed it comes back to life voyage of the severed and then removed of the grave I, i'm just assuming it's just the, the birth I and resurrection this, actually I, I listened to i kind of followed along with the lyrics i, I, I was kind of curious what they were talking about it's partly that um it goes through the the birth and death or the whatever it's it's the uh the birth, the the crucifixion, and the resurrection. The, you know, even to the point where, like, where they uh, found the empty tomb, um, and that's about the first half of the album. Th then after that, it's just kind of general, like, kind of good old Christian uh, rebuking. You know, um, yeah. Remember, you know, yeah. don't put prophets in front of uh, you know goodness because then um, you know you're you know, you're not to, um, living right. To, um... Was it voyage of the seven they get into talk about the entire This isn't working, TJ. We you can hear every other word. Yeah. It's all robot. Okay. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm having this. It's all good, man. You might want to try your I'm other having, system again. I'm having the worst thing of my but yeah, you know, the lyrics the lyrics are all uh quoted with Bible verses. So I mean they're they're pulling some direct quotes out of the Bible and stuff, and that's all documented throughout there. So if you want to get you know that into the theology of it, it's it's there. It's there for you to check out. And um but um yeah, I mean if TJ has sound, he appears to have uh locked up completely. So yep, there he goes. Hello? This is great, by the way. <laughs> now I'm with you. You're there. You're there for now. That could be. Try that. Anyway. Someone, someone hire Yacht Rock guy. He's our. Uh, yeah, he could be our, our tech guy. Indeed. We need one. Obviously. Send him over to Honor, Michigan to fix uh, TJ's squirrel infested yeah. uh, internet connection. But um okay, let's uh we'll move on. Um first impression style. How do you relate to this form of metal? Where does it sit in the pantheon? Chris. Um and we and we kind of been talking about this a good a good deal. I think um I mean I, I don't um I can respect it, you know. I, I don't care really what, what it's about um these days. Um Sure, you know, like uh, good and evil. It it it's it's an epic concept. It's 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 metal. You know, it is. And um, so I don't really care uh, necessarily about what they're talking about, like what any band is talking about, really, for that yeah. matter. But um, so and I'm sure a lot of us probably feel that way. I don't really care. Um, I like I you know, but I I do think this band like they do stand out in the you know if if you're comparing them to other Christian bands, they do stand out there. I think um, they just, um, they have like, they've got an aura to them. I think th this, like the cover, this is such a, I know we'll talk about this. I'm jumping ahead, but man, this cover is, is so cool to me. It's like, it, um, it just invokes like a whole um, vibe man it is the, the freaking calligraphy and stuff that's and actually you know what jason sherlock um is a graphic designer and he uh drew that 
That oh, was nice. another one of that was another one of his contributions. Um, and actually, he drew um, the early uh, mortification stuff too. The scrolls of the Megaloth and the self titled. He uh, drew those uh, yep. album covers. So, I mean, that's really cool. Um, yeah, Jeremy nailed it. You know, um, I think um, it was pretty interesting to hear, like, you know, the real, like, the basic tenets of Christianity laid out to a doom death record. Like, it was, it like painted it in a new light, you know, and it's, yeah, so I don't really, as far as where it sits in the pantheon, I think it's, it's good death doom and yeah. the end. Well, know? now that we've so, got TJ. I, I don't, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, now we got no. TJ kind of working. TJ, what are your thoughts, your initial thoughts, your first impression of this album? I know you've had it for years, but what are your thoughts listening to it again? Oh, well, uh, the first time I got it, um, I was completely blown away. Are we, are we still going? Because I'm having... Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Right, we, can okay. we can hear you. Okay. Go. Go. Yeah, so the, when I first got it back, uh, it was in 93 when it came out. I mean, I was completely blown away. Um, it, it was, you know, because it was so, uh, you know, it stood right up there with, with the, some of the best stuff. It was totally, because I had heard some of Paramecium's demo stuff prior to this, and it it wasn't good. It was really just average, boring, you know, whatever. And with him being a part of mortification that was so good, you know, we were always, you know, expecting something and it was, I was just totally blown away by it. And, you know, I was looking up like what came out around the same time and, uh, you know, like, uh, was it, uh, was it the Pearl in the Dark River? I think it was, um, that came out around the same time. Um, the Angel in the uh, Dark River. The yeah. Angel in the Dark, Dark River. River, forgive me. Yeah. And, uh, I think it was like Cathedral's second record came out around that time, which, ugh, but you know, Carnival um, Bizarre, yeah. yeah, something like that. And the, in the scheme of the bands that were putting stuff out in that, in that format and that style at the time, it was, it was right up there. And uh, it just always, just totally. always, always loved the record. I think, you know, for my money, you know, it, it, it they're just, they did so well with it. Um, I never really did care too much for everything they did after. Um, just didn't feel the same. It got a, li a little bit more artsy, a little bit more involved. It's good, but I just didn't right. care about it too much. I wouldn't say by any means it's bad. You know, I, no. I think it's, it, it's worth listening to. It, it's cool, but it, it, I think it might lacked a little bit of that, uh, the heaviness, you know. I have not heard a single note of any album after this. <laughs> Yeah, just spun a spun a little bit, you know. Um, yeah, but it it's cool for sure. It's not not. I don't think they've released a bad album at all. Primitive and brutal and and dark and that stuff kind of goes in a different direction a little bit. It's still the doom stuff, but you know they just it just gets a little. More, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I suppose if I I can listen to it again, I might fall in love with it like I did. You know, like with my dad. I were half and now I absolutely adore everything they do. You know, I just I had to revisit it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um we did that, uh first press style. Musicality, talent. Chris. <laughs> um <laughs> It's great. You know, I, I it, riffs, man. Oh my God. The riffs, such good riffs. They're, they're, they're not mind blowing riffs. They're, they, they do kind of fit, you know, just the, yeah, the doom that was going on at the time, but they're, they're heavy. They're awesome. They're, um, man, like the first riff of the first song, like, dun, 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 like so heavy so heavy like they are they get lodged in my head they're fun they're cool um so such good riffs and obviously um jason's playing cool it, like he almost kind of assumes like lead drummer um role in the band i mean he's i don't know it's just good i i wouldn't i mean it's 
it's certainly not reinventing the wheel as far as a uh, a doom record, but it's it's good. You know, it's it, it's just what I need it to be. There's no searing solos. You know, it's it's a lot of um, death metal riffs slowed way the fuck down. Um, so it's great for what it is. It's great. It, I don't need I don't need the musicianship to be any better than it is. It's it's awesome. There's one for you, TJ. I don't know if you can see the comments on your phone. Do you dig Unholy from Finland? I don't know that I've ever heard them. To be honest, oh, with they're, the great. they're great. I'll have to look it up. Uh, they're great. Look it up. The second Ring of Power is a total Doom classic. Awesome, very cool album. What about you, TJ? Now that we got gotcha, you, um, the musicality and talent behind the band. What are your thoughts? Well. You know, it, Jason Sherlock, being that he contributed so much to this musically, that's where he really shines in this record. I mean, his phrasing and playing on it are definitely stellar, but it's doom, you know. So, you know, what's he to do, you know? But he does yeah. some really choice stuff on here. He accents and his playing, you know, he, he's being musical and stuff, and it's good. Um, yeah, he it, does you know, add a couple of, like, time, fast double bass parts where you wouldn't think he would. Yeah. 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 yeah and uh he uh but again it's like he he does so much more you know he contributed to the songwriting and everything else so you know he's kind of shining through in every aspect of it um <laughs> and uh that is fucked up that you what? say that yacht rock guy oh my god you have no idea how funny you that have is no fucking idea <laughs> Holy shit, that is too good. Oh, man. That's right. <laughs> I tell you what, tune in next time. Tune in next oh time. Oh my and god, we'll, that we'll, is, we'll, and we'll lay it is out. Is this real? Oh my god. Dude, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll let you in on the joke. <laughs> oh my our, god. Our, our, I can crack. I am not <laughs> wearing a camera right bag on my head. That is so funny to say that because we have absolutely talked about that yacht rock guy. Like, like that is a running joke in our little camp. <laughs> Holy shit, that is so funny. It it, yeah. it 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 goes so much deeper than just my yeah, mere the, the, Exactly. Yeah. There's a there's a, a whole story that we're we not explaining yeah, the story, of Chris. Yes, we're, keeping, we're keeping that to ourselves. Yes. Too, <laughs> that is Chris is like, yeah. Tune in next time if you want to hear the story yeah. of Little El Duce and Hot Flat Pop. Indeed. <laughs> what is any of that? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you got it. Well, you got to tune me, in. For me, the talent is on point. Um, I think this album could hang with the uh, their contemporaries up in the UK <laughs> for sure. You've got um, there's an obvious uh, my early my dying bride death doom di uh, influence, and then of course they bring the, the the violin in on the the first song very reminiscent you know you got that old dirty um paradise lost doom feel to be in some of this stuff too um the talent is on point the songwriting is really good like i said there's a song i think it was the killing that i thought was kind of boring but they as the album went on they started work with more dynamics there's more of a, a you know heavy double bass plod that would come in um, they broke it up nicely, and I think this band really started to excel when they started to fluctuate outside of the um, the just the 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 straight doom template. You know, there's some give and it take was... to the songs, and it's good songwriting. Um, and the sound, well, we'll talk about the sound later, but I think it's great, and I really love the vocals. The vocals are super yeah. sick. Yeah, there's like a two vocal thing going on. One's kind of low. One's kind of like you know more of a blackened, sick, sick sounding. Very blackened uh, and like yeah, rotten, rotten vocal cord style. It's it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so they they know like they know the non Christian bands for sure. Oh, for sure. Most of those guys all, you know, like when Mortification was here in town and. um when they, they stayed at Jim and Lee's house and they, they took them around town and they took them into uh, um, Blue Moon Records when they were still downtown. And uh, they, uh, you know, Steve Rowe was going through the metal section and um, it seems like he, he picked up the new Morbid Angel record that was out at the time. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember for sure, but it's probably Covenant. Covenant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but, you know, they're, they're, you know they know those bands. They they all listen to that stuff, and they're they're like everybody else. They have their, you know, 
you know, their own, their own walk and their, their own choices to make as far as what, what seems right for them as far as listening to, you know, secular m music, you know, so some guys won't, some guys don't, um, that not at all. I mean, I, the guy, uh, I always forget, brought, no, the guy that brought us down to uh, Cornerstone was the last time we played as Feast Eternal, well, the next second to last time. Um, he had a collection, music collection that was easily as big as Marty's, and he didn't have a stitch of uh, secular music in his collection. Um, all Christian wow. bands, and, you know. Um, and again, and he was excited about all. Dale, was his name Dale? Dale. Dale. Oh, forgive me, Dale. I'm sorry. Everybody's doing, that's intense. You know. But yeah, he he um and he was excited about all of it, you know. And uh, it didn't matter. He just it was all good to him, and he loved it all. And you know, and, and a lot of guys are like that. But then you know, you get guys like me that will cut our teeth on the old school and everything else. And so it's like there's always a balancing act. There are, I mean, I you know, there are bands that I just I still admire and love that I don't really listen to anymore. Um, you know, I just. There's there's place there's this place in me that just it, it you know like no nah, I just you know I don't I don't you know you don't need it. I just don't I just you know and they 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 say the same the things they say and they're into what they're into and it is what it is um, it's not my place to uh, condone or condemn or whatever it is what it is um, oh yeah yeah that was crazy um, that cornerstone was uh, quite an event <laughs> but uh, what's cornerstone. Yeah, it was a it was a huge uh, Christian music festival. It was like a week long thing. It was massive. There was a giant campground in Illinois. And it went on for years and years and years and years, and then they finally uh, closed the place up and sold the campground. Did um, we ever go there? You, we you did played, go there. Yeah, we played. I don't even remember what year it was when we played there, but uh, we got we came down and played with. Uh, Grave Robber and Dogs of Prey and uh, Frost Like Ashes. And um, I don't know, the place was huge as a city, you know, and then there was all kinds, of, you know, um, the big stage, you know, I think, I think As I Lay Dying might have been there that year. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Living Sacrifice played and um, 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 what's that? What's that one real popular deathcore band? Um, Zale? No, no, no. They're more, they're like brutal deathcore. Um, why can't I think of the name of that band? Um, <laughs> cause I don't pay any attention to them. They're good. I, just, I don't care about them. Um, but they, they were there and, um, oh, what is the name of that band? It's going to drive me nuts now. But, uh, yeah, the, it's crazy. It's crazy festival, huge, huge, huh. tens of thousands of people. And, you know, um, just you know, week long, and it was yeah, it's all kinds of stages and events and stuff and things and speakers and whatever. Yeah, we went down, and stayed for part of it. I think we were there for two days, two three days, and played the one day and whatever. So, I think there's actually a little bit of footage on YouTube if you guys want to check out. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I just watched it the other day. I mean, great band. So it wasn't just metal bands. I mean, it was like Amy Grant there inciting a circle pit. Come on, you fuckers. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, the, the small stages <laughs> primarily were, you know, punk yeah. and ska and metal and, and stuff like that. And then the main stage had, God, I, I'd have to look it up. I'd have to go back and see. But there were, you know, there were big, big bands. And then they'd have speakers that would come out to, um, on the main stage as well. And, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't, we never even went down. We went down and looked at the main stage. It was down by the, you had to walk way down to the back of the, the campground and we, and it was down by a lake and, um, we went and checked it out. Um, but you know, we never went down there. We stayed up with all the small tents and all the small, smaller stage. Well, there was, well, small, I mean, the tent we played in was pretty big, but then there was like great big circus size tents. There was like, I think there was like two of those or three of those. And then they, then they kind of went down in size and the, there was like rows of them. And then there was like uh flatbed trucks with stages on the back of them that bands were playing on and they'd run around and they'd Sounds go like around and pick up. Time. 
it was crazy. It is crazy because they'd run around and pick up shows while they were there. So yeah. they would like, okay, I'm coming on, you know, the, the first day and we're playing at, on this stage and every stage had a name. And so we'd pl- they'd play on that stage and then they'd go around and they'd pick up a show at the stage over across the way. And then they'd, you know, and they'd play, you know, every day while they were there. Some bands would play twice a day, um, you know, or more than once, you know, and, and it was nuts. And we didn't know any of that stuff going in. So it was kind of, you know, we kind of missed out on some of that, but it was, it was cool, you know. <laughs> All Neat. right, let's go on to okay. This is the band's debut album, as we've determined. Uh, their influences are evident, which we've also discussed. How do Paramecium fit within the doom genre? Are they on target? Are they exceptional? Are they lacking? I personally feel like for the time for the time it came out, it was easily as good as anything else that was coming out. Um, it's like there might be a soft spot here in the record, but overall, it's it's they totally fit with their contemporaries. Um, and, you know, they were even, you know, at 93, they were, you know, the violin, the acoustic guitar, the operatic vocals. You know, they they, they were, you know, pushing the, the envelope at the edges, too. And then you go to their, you know, later stuff and, and that becomes even more so. So definitely on, on point, um, it's an absolutely great record and uh i mean i i've got my you know the open you know the opening songs are by far the best and then you know i think like you know like the third track is it really stands out and then the end of the record when they get at the acoustic i was gonna stuff, say they, they bring it around at the end of the record so yeah they kind of like get back to what's yeah. going on the first there's even a little uh time minutes. timing change uh fluctuation they did some it's a cool song the last song is pretty cool yeah it is definitely. Yeah. I think the first yeah, and that, last that, songs are my favorite ones. Yeah, for, for sure. <laughs> All right. What about you, Chris? Anything to uh, add to that? Not really. I mean, I, I think it was it was definitely not not lacking. It was not any worse than um, um, the other death doom of the uh, of the era. It was it was it was cool. Yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> is this still about wasp? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I think it's all it's all actually really about wasp. Yeah, Isn't it everything? It. <laughs> all right, let's get to the production. I, I guess I'll start with this one because um to me I think the the production is overall really good. I think the guitars have a tin canny sound to them. They sound very Agreed. um it kind of detracts a little bit from the heaviness, but the guitar sound itself is so good. It kind of, it kind of works past that a little bit. And I think overall that tin canny sound and how the vocals are so in the front, you know, that, that cool transition between the lower and the higher snarl, the, 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 the the very minor flaws in the production actually kind of add to the band's sound a little bit, which I think, I think that sets them apart a bit from their, you know, the bands that may have influenced them, which is cool. I mean, you listen to, um, as the flower withers by my dying bride, that's just a crushingly heavy doom metal album. And, um, I mean, even Gothic by paradise Lost, which is one of my favorite doom albums that, that, that isn't without its problems. Sonically, you know, there, there's some, there's some thinness in the guitars there and the drum sound isn't the best, but, um, this album I think holds up really good. The production is a very minor complaint. It isn't detrimental. I've heard Christian albums that sound a lot worse than this. And, um, Oh yeah. And I, you know, even these early mortification albums, they sound good, but even like scrolls in the Meg- scrolls in the Megal, it doesn't sound great. You know, it could, if the, the production was maybe a little deeper, a little sharper, the, I know. the one thing, the, the guitar tone on scrolls in the Megaloth is crap. It's not no, a good, it's a very yeah, thick that guitar. Was a, and that was all, you know, that was all I think really had more to do with Steve Rowe and his his kind of vision for how the band was so sound because of the bass. And this yeah. one, you know, because when, when Paramisi, you hear that and, you know, being that he's related, you know, because of Jason and it's so heavy, it's so crushing. It's yep. like, but, you know, I mean, they recorded this stuff in Australia in 93. It's like... Can't you know, imagine there were a lot of death metal friendly studios to work with. Right. You know, time. and um, you know, it's like I'm sure, you know, it was, I'm sure they had great equipment, but again, 
you know, they're probably looking at these guys like, you know, crikey, are you crazy? You know, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I do feel like uh, Mortification could have been a, a lot bigger band if they had better production. Well, I mean, on this, those first this couple came albums. out, this came out on uh, Nuclear Blast or something in post monetary affliction yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. You there gotta were, love there the were, MC Hammer they were pants. They still huge. Indeed. MC Hammer <laughs> pants. You cannot <laughs> deny that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 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 they're great albums, definitely. Yeah. Oh, uh, I guess one thing I'd like to say, it's yeah. just kind of, there, there's some funny things with this Christian metal stuff. It's just interesting. Like, <laughs> like the, um, like, are, are they trying to be funny? I just don't know. Like they're on the first Morphication album, um, you know, like I think the song name and the only lyric of the song just repeated like 8,000 times is God rules with a Z. Yeah. You know, God rules. Um, that's funny, and I don't know if it, I don't know if it's intended to be funny. I think it must be since he added a Z in there, but uh, I don't know. It's just cool. It's interesting. It's 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 a little weird, but I, delightfully weird. You know, I'm a little weird, so um, I don't know. It's fun. Good time. Any no, thoughts on the any thoughts on the production, Chris? Um. Nothing really more to add. I mean, I yeah, I, I agreed that I was like, man, I could just use a little bit more beef out of these guitars. I was listening to it in the car on the way home from work today. And um, yeah, there's like, you know, on my first listen, I kind of I was like, wow, this album's like huge. And the and it sounds just really big. But the more I listened to it, I was like, wow, like, you know, like it really is. It, it is kind of lacking in, in parts. I, I, I think it would have helped just from like a, I don't know, like, and I don't know too much about the technical side of things, but like I, I feel like it's a little like closed in sometimes with the production. I don't really know what yep. you do to make that just sound bigger. Um, yep. I would love to feel like you're in a big tomb, you know, and I don't I don't always feel that, you know, yep. um, but it, it's still cool. I mean, the guitar it, tone it, on its own stands pretty strong, though, even though the, they're. Yeah. Yeah. Weird, and I think that's really it's not why they, bad. It's not bad. I think, they shied, I think they shied away from the heavy reverb to try to keep that that guitar tone so kind of just so brutal, you know, and it, I mean, it, it does. It's like, yes, it does have kind of a, a tubular kind of shape to it, but it just it's so it just pounds so good. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you know, it does. He opens, uh, he opens that, those B, you know, that B up and just, they start riding it. And it just, I mean, it's just plodding right over your yeah, skull. The first, so the first two minutes of this album is one fucking note. Like yeah, that, yeah. that is like, this album is like, fuck you. Listen to this note. And well, like uh, us, we're I'm always like, afraid that we're always afraid to get mileage out of riffs. We don't want to, but here <laughs> they are two minutes. Of jung, 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 yeah. Jung, you know? Yeah. And it, it can uh, work, man. It can work. Yeah, and, yeah. and just to add to No Baloney's comment, I, I agree too. It, it's it. Um, I definitely don't mind. I, it, it doesn't need to be a perfect production. I I, I think it, 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 it. There's a charm there, and, and that that goes um, for a lot of the early, uh, you know, '80s and '90s death metal. Is um, there's a charm from the imperfections for sure. Like I, oh, yeah. I, 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 mean, I like to think of it as a bunch of like people who don't have means to make perfectly polished records just getting in the studio and doing well, it. And that, yeah, I mean, that's like, what I like for, that's what I like about it. Like for me, like you go back and listen to like Blood Feast EP, the Face Fade EP. I mean, that album, that EP is just dripping with chorus and reverb and it's in delay. It is ridiculous. And it just makes... It, it's such a mess, but the song, it's so good. And it, it's so, you know, it just, it just completely gives it that, you know, th just that life and that charm. And it's like, and you know, you hear the stuff, you know, you hear the, the swirling of the effects and everything. And it's, it, you know, it, it's just crazy nuts. And so those kind of things definitely add life to, to a recording and these guys, it's like they went in and they, you know, the, the, the record is polished. I mean, Exhumed to the Earth is definitely polished. They knew their yeah. stuff and that was a very they got a good track. recording out of it. Yeah, but it's still, you know, there's still got some of that kind of homebrewed charm on it that just, you know, gives it that, that's, you know, that life that, you know, I think most of us that 
listen to these bands it's like we love you know i love i love a record that's got a lot of shine to it you know it's when it's good it's good but you still you, you always gravitate back to the stuff that you know was there before and that isn't necessarily as perfect you know um and it just yeah. sounds so good okay let's talk about the artwork chris already might as well reiterate the few things you said about the art chris yeah, I I was um, it was cool to learn that Jason Sherlock did the design here. It's and I, and, I, and our drummer Chris talked. He you know he was like he was um, you know he didn't always like how it kind of almost looked like a, a flyer. It, it kind of does look like a church service flyer in, in some regards, you know. But um, I don't know. I almost kind of like the juxtaposition of kind of the grainy photo. It's it's it the grainy photo in this um. And this really intricate calligraphy it's 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 bizarre it's bizarre i love uh yeah just the old um i don't even know it's cool it, it's 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 weird but it's cool i i've never really seen a cover like it um it almost looks like a croatian was that the name of it what's the name of that band croatian it looks like one of their album covers with that weird calligraphy and stuff. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just so cool. I, I don't know. I like it a lot. I love how it's... I don't know. I don't know. I like how it's green. I have no idea. It's cool. Yeah, I like I like, I, I like I, I the, It's like an old, old piece of, you know, parchment with, yeah. um, you know, a picture and some calligraphy on it. That's cool. I think, Marty I has think better the, words. <laughs> yeah. I think it's uh I, I agree with you. It's cool. It looks different than a typical metal record. It's cool. Mm -hmm. TJ. Oh yeah, I'm I agree with that. Uh, me the photo you know they bring the and then they they look past it to the graves beyond. And you know, I, I think it's I think it's a powerful image. I think it's good. Um, I mean, it's like yeah, you know, ninety three. He probably didn't lay this out on a, on a MacBook. You know, he probably put all that and then sent it in for you know to be put together. However, but uh, um, you know, I've always I've always liked it. I've always felt like it was very uh, appropriate um, for the, you know, the layout and everything. Especially like you get on the back. And how they did the little lines like they would in the old texts, where you know each line, each, each for letter has its own little piece of art. And uh, anyway, <laughs> my screen is blotting all that out. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, that's just like you would see in old texts, old books. That's you know how they would do it. They would. Each, each one would have its own little thing, you know. Yep. That's cool. So it's, definitely cool. It's a story. Um, I, I mean, I, that's probably one of the reasons I, one of the main reasons I wanted to buy this album in the first place is the cover. It, it just, it, it stood out from the others instantly. All right. Very effective. Let's, let's, um, yeah, it looks more like a book than an album. I've always yeah. loved the aesthetic of illuminated letters, calligraphy, and yeah, the colors are nice. Um, sure. Let's let's end with our judgment, final thoughts, TJ. Now that you're working, I'll let you talk, and I'm gonna go use a little boys' room while you're doing that. So go for it. <laughs> well, good luck. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I for me, this has always been a favorite of mine. I like I said earlier, this is actually my third copy of this record. I, not really sure whatever happened. I was I was a lot more brutal to my music collection in years past than um, guilty. I actually at one point uh, dispossessed myself of my entire music collection. Um, and you know, again, like when I talked about, um, you know, people trying to kind of work their faith out as as like it says in the Bible, with fear and trembling. You know, you so you're trying to decide. And, and find your way through to what's right for you and and versus everybody else and you know so I didn't I didn't have a music collection for a long time and uh, you know only in recent years I've started reaccumulating music again so 
Um, this record is, I think it's a great record. I think it's, um, I think it's a great example uh, of, you know, Christian metal. Um, they are far and away one of the premier bands of the time and still are. Um, it's unfortunate they don't get more attention. You know, you go into the threads today and, you know, it's, God, it's still the same 10, 15 bands, you know, they're talking about, you know, Deliverance and Tourniquet and, you know, Seventh Angel and what, you know, Demon Hunter and, um, you know, um, oh, Impending Doom. <laughs> That's the oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have heard that. Yeah. The old mushy brain working. Yeah. Saw them live at Cornerstone there. Slam metal, I don't know, whatever. I yeah. don't care. They got pretty popular. They're, I think they were on Metal Blade too. But anyway, yeah, for, for me, you know, I just uh, always love this record. I was, I remember, I, cause I think I, I think I bought it at Rainbow Books too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did. Did you? Um, yeah. So, um, you know, the record yeah, stores definitely. in Traverse City growing up are always tough when you're shopping at fucking Rainbow Bookstore. <laughs> 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 yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, Chris. How about you? Final thoughts? But, yeah, so that's you know. That's my... Oh, sorry. I thought I thought you were done, TJ. You broke up. Sorry. No, I'm this fine. was all. So I, it's fine. It's all fine. Um, yeah, I had a great time uh, absorbing this, and uh, I'll probably um look into the other i think there are two more that i need to check out a little bit i'm interesting to see the uh progression a little bit um it, this actually spurred me to get a little bit more into mortification dive into uh the the other albums too i i um ended up picking up scrolls of the megaloth in the in the first one too i think that's just the self-titled i think yep. but and then the whole horde thing you know that that's very just it's just an interesting piece of I think it's a very interesting piece of heavy metal history in in this general. This is a killer fucking record, man. <clears throat> it is. <clears throat> it is. Good. Some of the most funny, uh, <laughs> funny song titles. My invert God. the inverted cross. Invert the inverted cross. Oh man, can I just please um, say a couple of these? If you haven't heard these, man, look this up. Um, release and clothe the virgin sacrifice. Someone yep. help that. Release and clothe the. It's just so great. Silence the blasphemous chanting. <laughs> yep. Uh, and and it just goes on. It's 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 a very bizarre uh, thing that happened. It's just it's neat. I love stuff like that. Um, no, but this this album, it's great. I'm I'm happy to have owned it. I um to to own it, and um, I think it's just a totally solid piece of music, regardless of. Uh, what spirituality uh, the, the musicians have, um, but it does it does give way to some good conversation about you know religion's place in music and because yep. it's always it's always been around. Absolutely. So, uh, but it's it's a really cool album. It's I'm it's a it'll be definitely listened to a lot more. So. Yeah, and for me, um, I, I'm going to say basically the same things. I, I loved it. I think I loved Cole. it more back. What? Oh, I'm just talking to Brian. <laughs> right. Can't you um, see she's cold? Um, I think it's um, I think I liked it more when it came out. Listening to it now, I still really like it. Again, I was not in the mood for Doom this week, which is fine. But I still loved it. It's still really good. A couple songs here are weaker than others, but. It's really for the era that came out in the Christian scene. It's a shining star in the Christian metal scene for sure. Um, even on the even on the the worldwide doom scene, it's it holds its own. It really does. Absolutely. It's a good album, and I, and I think we'd all encourage you guys to check it out. It's a good record. Um, um, but yeah, that's that's it. I'll put a nail in this one. And uh, should we do this again due to all our technical issues? It's my turn to pick again. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, for the next, so if anybody in the chat wants to check this record out to, along with us, um, I'm going to go with rage trapped. Oh, Wee! Okay. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I, 
I'm ready. <laughs> I'm I'm here for it for sure. Let's do this. You didn't pick Let's Perfect do this Man thing. because you know I love Perfect Man. <laughs> Well, I, I think Perfect Man is good as well. Um, let me see. What number album is this for the band? This is one, That's like, two. what, 58? <laughs> this is their fifth record. This came yeah. out in 1992. And, um, hey, Mia, thank you so much. You're too kind. I don't know how much that is in Japanese money, but thank you so much. <laughs> it's like 10 bucks, I think. Oh, right on. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. You're, you're in on all these streams with us, whether it's tonight or... Heavy Metallurgy's Friday night streams, and uh, thank you so much. Um, but yeah, this album, I kind of I started off with Rage. They're a very unique, different band, and um, Jurgen did a, uh, a a mini deep dive on the first half of their career and was talking about how good this record is. And I checked it out, and I know where I stand on it. I'm just curious where you guys stand on it too. So Rage Trapped, it'll right be on. our next one. If anybody That's in the chat is. wants to check this album out. Do it. We're going to try to figure out our um, technical issues. So next time we come back, we won't hopefully be having these problems again. But um, sorry, if the weather, you know, if the, if the weather is nice, it starts getting nicer. I can actually sit in the backyard closer to the main router in the house. <laughs> I'm out in my in my shop in my cave and I'm using an extender, which generally is pretty good. Um, I don't know why I'm having lag issues, but the, my company has been working on stuff, too. So I don't know what it is. I don't know. I Again, demand you stream from your above ground pool, TJ. <laughs> That's, <Next coming. laughs> That's coming. That's <laughs> coming. Hey, no, hey, Phil. I'm glad. That's why we're here. We're we're doing this because it's fun, and if and we're trying to get people to check out new music. So that's even amongst the brothers here in the band. Um, we, you know, we're all music fans, and we're you know talk about music constantly and trying to get each other turned on to new stuff and. Um, I've I've struggled to pick this record. I've I've changed like five different times. There was going to be a a black metal thing, and then it went into Voivod Dimension Hatros, and I realized we just did a uh, a big uh, deep dive, two two part deep dive over on the uh, Metal Madness '66 Voivod thing. So I didn't think I needed to do more Voivod. So here's where we landed. Um, I'm ready. Tim I'm Rage I'm sounds excited. nothing like Halloween. So not even if imagine if you're worried the, about that. Don't worry about German, it. German, German stuff. <laughs> They're German. It's German metal. And it, yeah, it, German, but it's not Halloween. Yeah. It's like not really thrash. It's not really straight up metal. It's like a weird conglomeration of conglomerate of everything. It's it, it's definitely hard hitting and aggressive. You know, it oh, is. Yeah. And it's rageful. Yeah, the main guy PV is a hell of a songwriter. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So I've heard a couple of things. It's I'm excited, but I'm not, nothing off trapped. So I'm I'm uh, definitely excited about to about that. I've never really delved beyond Perfect Man. I bought that when it came out, and I for some I don't know, especially at the time, I fell in love with that record. I for me, which was kind of crazy, I didn't listen to a lot of stuff like that. But and I just I, I broke that record out not that long ago actually and was jamming it so yeah i i'm look it'll be cool it'll be cool yep. it's a i i know where i stand i'm not going to give too much away but <laughs> this is all i'll say um well i mean yeah i mean there's an element there's an element to that and there, there's yeah. a definite power metal um element there's a thrash element there's like a, it's just weird but really well written metal I mean, it's it's yeah. They're oh. definitely unique. They're unique. His vocals are very much. I mean, he's very identifiable in his own. He doesn't sound like anybody, and you know, it, it's thrashy. Um, it does have a power element to it for sure. But I don't know. They're they're kind of their own thing, man. They really kind of are. Hey Tim, I've got like five Storm Warrior CDs. I only need one more. So I have one. Great. <laughs> I have one Storm Warrior. That that's the Greek band, I think, right? Oh, are those are Greek. No, they're German. We're, we're, oh, they uh, are. We're, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm thinking yeah. of something. Hey, else. Uh, there's a All live right. thing of them at a big festival, and um, they do a cover of "Ride the Sky," and Kai Hansen can, comes out and sings on it. It is oh, fucking crushing. Right. It is so good, so good. It's such a great band. I mean, they're a total Halloween, early Halloween worship band. Definitely check them out. Their first album is so good. But anyway. 
we're done for the night. Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out with us tonight. And um, thank you. We'll be back maybe next week. Maybe it'll be a couple. Like I said, we'll see where everybody's schedule sits and um, technological issues, and we'll try to get all that figured out. But thank you all for joining us. And guys, thanks again for hanging out with me tonight. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, we appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Cheers. Peace. Cheers.